On Standpoint, we turn attention to the sad development from the Okwama community in Ugeli South local government, where 17 army personnel were killed. The military has recovered the bodies of the soldiers. On Thursday, the troops responded to a distress call and were ambushed by Irish youth in the community. The reinforcement team led by commanding officer was also killed. The team included the commanding officer, two majors, one captain, at 12 soldiers. By Saturday, we learned that the Chief of Defense Staff had ordered an investigation into the brutal murder. Arrests have been made and a manhunt actually continues. President Bola Tinubu has sent a strong warning to the perpetrators. The president, in a message, joined Nigerians and the men and women of the armed forces to mourn and express profound grief over the killings. He said the incident demonstrates the dangers faced by the country's servicemen and women in the line of duty, and he salutes their heroism, courage, and uncommon grit and patriotism. President Tinubu said, quote, Members of our armed forces are at the heart and the core of our nationhood. Any attack on them is a direct attack on our nation. We will not accept this wicked act, end quote. The president also granted full authority to the defense headquarters and the chief of defense staff to apprehend anybody found culpable for this unquestionable crime. I'm now joined by security expert Brigadier General Anthony Onibasa, retired, and the factional president, Ijo Youth Council, Theophilos Alayi, to discuss this. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. Let's begin with you, uh, Brigadier General Onibasa. How did you feel when you heard this news, and especially when you saw images from this community? Thank you, Bosse, for thank you, TVC and Bosse, for having me. It's always a sad development when men that have sworn their lives to defending a nation are subjected to such brutal end. Every man that settles for service has it at the back of his mind that he is willing to give his today so that the rest of the citizens would have a tomorrow. The incident that happened in the Niger Delta last week was particularly very sad because the commanding officer and indeed those soldiers are men that have served this nation in the most difficult places, the most difficult circumstances, have excelled and survived, only to be slaughtered like chickens at the backyard under circumstances that they thought they were amongst friends. I've heard all kinds of um, insinuations. Oh, they were not on a peace mission. They were not on this, on that. Let me say a few things about the commanding officer of 181 that died in that incident. He was an officer that you could call an infantryman of infantrymen. I remember inducting him when I was in Army headquarters in operations into um, operations in the Northeast. He did so well that he got accelerated promotion. That's an uncommon thing within the service. He served in the most difficult places when he was posted to, um, to Green Inquiry, it made an instant difference with regards to the bandits. For those of you that don't know um, how Green Inquiry is, it's like a no-go area and a deep cell and location, a strong point for bandits in the current um, fight against banditry in the Northwest. This officer has also served in the South-South for quite a long time. He, he has been in um, 195, again, he was garrison commander in Asaba before he took up this assignment. So he's familiar with the South South. I've also listened to um, royals in the South South speak about him. I heard what our respected statesman, um, Clark, also said about this officer. So it tells you that for whatever reasons, whatever grievances, whatever challenges we have in the North. In the, in the South South, in the Delta, it is one of the saddest things that Nigeria has 
ever experienced. So for me, it was really, really sad, not just from the perspective of knowing this person personally, but knowing that those officers in their dying minutes would have felt thoroughly betrayed by the nation that they had sworn to give their lives to. Uh, well, l let's turn to uh, Mr. Alaye. Uh, one wonders what could make a group of people uh, turn on personnel who are positioned to restore calm in a, in a community. Whatever came over them to not just kill, but, I mean, in such a brutal manner, these personnel of the military who were on a peace mission. How do you see this incident and uh, efforts to fish out the perpetrators? Um, thank you very much. You know, first of all, Levan, let me once again uh, commensurate with the family of the disease, military men, the gallant soldiers of the Nigerian army, that uh, this uh, unfortunate incident that took their life at the uh, Okama community in Delta State. And, uh, the Nigerian military who have lost these gallant soldiers that have put in their best for the territorial integrity of Nigeria and internal dispute management. As a people, the Niger Delta over time has always been very, very relatively peaceful. What happened last week is really, really a, 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 a bad omen that the people of the Niger Delta never wish to experience at this point in time. You know, before the amnesty, the Niger Delta was always put in bad light. And as a result of that, from the youth, elders, everybody, who put in effort, time, to see that we sensitize our youth not to key into such kind of act. And after the amnesty, I believe this is the first time we are experiencing this kind of unwarranted killing of Nigerian military. Why we commensurate with the people of the Nigerian military and the family of those that died, we are also condemning what actually happened in Bayelsa State, the Bomotoro community, where the military, in the name of looking for the culprit that carried out the act, killed over 40 Ijo boys, Ijo youth, a Bomotoro youth, unarmed in close range fire. Please, what we expect the Nigerian military to do is that at any given point when such kind of information, intelligence report has been gathered, the best thing and the right thing to do is to apply the international rule of engagement, where the culprit itself will be looked for and brought to book to face justice. As but I have said, what transpired in the Okama community is a big tragedy. And that is why, as a council, we are appealing to the military, to the Office of the National Security Advisor, and to Mr. President that an independent investigation team is being set up to dig out the real cause of these military persons that were killed. I hear you, Mr. Alaye. So innocent people. Yes, I, 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 hear, I hear you. So yes, and I wanted to ask you, Mr. Alaye, what are you doing as a youth council, a council of uh, you know, young people to support the manhunt for the culprits? Yes, as a, as a, as a council, as a, as a youth, as a team, we have already set up an investigation team to support the military in information gathering so that we can get to the root cause of this problem and bring the culprits to book. In as much as this particular incident happened in the community, we are aware that there are first-class information. So we shouldn't be in hurry to draw into conclusion what really happened. Till death, we don't know if it is as a result of bunker people that the military's personnel were killed, or it was as a result of the land dispute that is happening between Okama and Okoloba that led to this killing. So what we want to do is that we want those the culprits that carry out this barbaric act brought to book. And that is why we, as youth angle from the youth area, 
we have set up an internal investigation team. All right, then. To what? support the military. And that is why we really want an independent investigation team to be set up. So All right, then. But whatever the cause is, whatever... Okay, then. But whatever the cause is, is, you have said that it is condemnable. Let's take the conversation back to uh, the Brigadier General. The President has given marching orders to the defense headquarters and the chief of defense staff to fish out the perpetrators. Uh, you know, there are some who have the view that the police, which has responsibility for internal security, should rather be the one handling this matter. What do you think? Well, thank you very much. Um, I've heard that view also. And indeed, certain security experts have also expressed that view. But we need to understand if you check Section 218 of the Constitution, the roles of the armed forces are clearly spelled out. To defend the territorial integrity of the nation, to bring a war to a favorable con conclusion where deterrence does not work, and also to support the civil power, to aid internal security, is one of the functions of the military. And then to support international arrangements such as OAU, all these peacekeeping and international um, peace efforts around the world. These are clearly defined roles of the armed forces. Now look at the Nigerian stage. Nigeria right now is a high risk business environment. Whether we want to face it or not, we are in a state of near insurrection where you have crime rates in excess of 60% on the average as a national average, you have um, well over 200 killings in one particular area based on criminal activities, based on criminal violence, based on militancy. You cannot tell me that it's a police action. It is a point. The truth is what is happening now is that we are over militarizing our police because we do not want to accept the fact that Nigeria is near a state of war. What I think should be said is, look, the military or a force that is not as lethal as a territorial military could be set up. The Nigerian military is under 200,000, covering a space of 600, over 623,000 square kilometers. That's the size of this nation. So this nation is underserved militarily. The situations where you find the military introduced are all situations that ought to be handled by the military. Even in advanced nations, they do not have um, situations go this bad before they call out the National Guard, which is actually pseudo-military, and then they call out the military itself to support um, such operations. Policing in this country is becoming overly militarized. Ordinarily, you expect, if you know the Yoruba word for police, is olopa. So a policeman is pictured as a pattern carrier. Today, we have a highly militarized police. Even the population is militarized. Before you go into any quarrel with anybody, are you all right? You know who I am. It, has, it tells you that it has affected our psyche as a people. So what I expect is for the military to be supported, just like the uh, last speaker, Dr. Laya, just said, it is important that there is local support. The kind of situation we find ourselves, there are three key things that need to be achieved if we want to make progress. One, you must have the support of the population. The second thing is you must have boots on the ground. You must have soldiers, you must have policemen, you must have security agencies on the ground. And quite frankly, the Niger Delta region is still militarized. I think the challenge was following the amnesty, there was not a proper demobilization or demilitarization of the area. So there exist all kinds of mushroom and aggrieved militant groups, all kinds of vigilante groups, all kinds of um, self-help military groups, and violent ones at that. I can tell you straight from where I'm seated that the Niger Delta state is not one for the police. And if you ask an honest policeman, they will tell you the same thing. I see the other day the government was procuring some advanced protection equipment, some military-grade equipment for the police. And I really shook my head. And I guess not the way to go. Setting up an armed police force would not do us any good as a nation. And the moment the people become 
militarized in their own setting also, will all seek self-help. I do not uh, discount the fact that when you look at the level of underdevelopment in the Niger Delta, you are probably um, I'm willing to sympathize with any form of protest. But the level of violence, the culture of violence that has taken root, and the fact that we have not yet de-escalated the region properly is the challenge with regards to that Nigeria. They're not calling police to come and do the kind of job that is required. In the place. All right. But how, going forward now, how do we ensure civil military relationship that is smooth, where the population is happy to interact with uh, uh, personnel of the armed forces, the police and other security agencies, and uh, very willing, really, to share intel with them to help in curbing crime and criminality. Let's uh, take from uh, Mr. Alaye, and then we'll come to you, uh, Brigadier General, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. In as much as uh, from the youth angle, we are always open to support the security agencies. And as a youth organization, and that, that is why you see that over time we have been engaging our youth on mind shift, giving them this needed sensitization so that things of this nature would not be happening in our region. We really want to support the Nigerian military. And at least at every given point in time in our communities, we know there are set down uh, leadership structures. Bring them on board. And when issues of this nation come on board, definitely we have to bring both parties together and support the military, support the security agencies. You know, trying to take this kind of actions, like my, my, my own worries, this issue incident happened in Delta State. And it's people in Bayasa State that is experiencing mm -hmm. or paying for what happened in Delta State. The question is, this thing happened between Thursday, Friday. On Sunday, as early as 7 o'clock, the military have carried out the needed investigation to know where the culprit has went to. And we are all aware of the Niger Delta environment. The approach at which the Bomotaro community was attacked is really, really regretting. And when issues of this nature come, we are feeling that the people on ground should be called on board so that we can definitely go into and fetch out those people that carried out this act, so that unnecessary killing of innocent soul will not be happening. Why the Niger Delta of today is, our target is to see how we can rebrand the Niger Delta. Let's be that there is a Niger Delta that is business friendly. This is a Niger Delta that investors can come in and comfortably do business. So that even the youth can have job opportunities and have food on their table to really de-escalate this level of militancy that is being experienced. And I can tell you too, that after the amnesty program, I believe there was tremendous and relative peace in the Niger Delta. I hear you, Mr. Alaye. Our... Yes, I, I hear you, and I must I really appreciate you. I, I would have really wanted the Brigadier General Nebasa to say something about what can be done with regard to constructive engagement so that we don't see this again. If you can do that within 30 seconds, sir. Okay, then. Violence of the citizens. Unfortunately, there's a diffusion of power from the center. There are all kinds of violent non-state actors who are also wanting to be heard and they are expressing themselves. Again, against the background of um, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, it is not a purely military solution you must have a developmental strategy to address this. I looked closely at the amnesty program and I realized that there was a gap. It was just skill acquisition. There was no path, there was no route to market essentially. There was no path for these men, I haven't trained them overseas, I haven't sent them to universities, I haven't given them skills for them to create jobs or to even have opportunities to express themselves. So All they right. are back to the very thing they know best to do. And we so hope that in the days that ahead. The all right, all right then. We hope that in the days ahead, all of those are considered. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Security expert, Brigadier General Anthony Onibasa retired, and uh, factional president, the Joy Youth Council, Theophilo Salai, for joining us on the program today. Well, that's our program, but then we'll